Number 91. Calculate the CO2 plus equilibrium concentration when 0.100 moles of CO NH36 NO32 is added to a solution with 0.025 molarity of NH3. Assume that the volume is 1.00 liters. Okay. So let's see. I have this huge junk of a mess ionic compound here, right? So it seems like we're dealing with equilibrium concentrations and they give us this ionic compound. So the first thing is we have to basically break this up. Now, whenever you see brackets like this, chances are you are going to be working with the complex ion. And if we're working with the complex ion, we have to get the KF value. Complex ions only have KF values, formation constants, F4 formation, making the complex ion. So in this whole um, ionic compound, I can break this up into its two components, right? I can break this up into a, a positive ion and then a negative ion, because remember, Ionic compounds always have just one split equals to positive and negative. So in here, I do notice that I have an NO3 and we've seen nitrate NO3 over and over and over again throughout this whole journey. So I know that this has to stay together. So the split has between, you know, has to be between the bracket and the parenthesis. So if we just do that, this will break down into the CO NH3, 6, and then this will break down into the NO3. Okay. Now, if you wanted to balance this, just know that there's one of these, so I don't have to put a coefficient in front, but there was two nitrates, so I would have to put a two in front of here, right? And then just put the charges. So you can use your subscripts. There was two nitrates, that crisscrosses up telling me that the complex ion was a two plus charge. And then there was only one complex ion that crisscrosses up telling you that the nitrate was a negative one charge. Okay. Now, if I just bring this down a little bit more, maybe if I put it over here, you started off with 0 0.100 moles of the whole ionic compound. So 0 0.100 moles. Now, if we want to transfer that information into using our KF value, we only care about the complex ion. We don't care about the nitrate. So I don't even care about doing this component. I just want that complex ion. So just use your mole ratios. For every one ionic compound, you had only one complex ion. So it's a one to one expression. So that means that whatever you started with, that's what you have to end with here. So you're ending with 0 0.100 moles of the complex ion. But if we're using KF values, we need molarity. And remember, molarity equals moles divided by liters. So they did tell us that we're assuming 1.0 liters. So this would be the same as 0 0.100 molarity. That's the information that I'm gonna use for my initial CO NH3 6 2 plus complex ion. The next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna write out this formula, right? With any KF value, you need a formula. And KF means that I'm forming this complex ion and you form it from its individual components. They told you that we're working with the CO2 plus and the NH3. So those two things have to come together to form the complex ion. So I have CO2 plus plus NH3 comes to equilibrium because we're dealing with K values. And you don't have to put this in brackets if you don't want to. We could just say CO NH3 six with the two plus. Okay, cool. Just make sure that you have this balanced. There's six ammonias, six NH3. So I do need to put a six in front of here. And now we're balanced. Charges are aqueous. And just know for complex ions, your ammonia, which is not charged, um, that's also aqueous as well. So it's not going to be in a gas state or a liquid state or anything like that, it's aqueous. Okay, so now, seems like they were talking to us as in terms of what happened in the beginning, right? Seems like 0.1 moles of this ionic compound is added to 
the 0.025 molarity NH3 solution. That seems like what you started with. And if you start with something, those values are initial values. And whenever they give you initial values, you got to write a nice table. So let's go for it. I, C, E. I stands for initial. They told us that we're starting off with 0.025 molarity of NH3. That's over here. So I'm just going to stick that number over here, 0.025. Don't fall into the trap that you have to multiply it by 6. This is the total molarity. So that's what you have to start with. Going over here, we did find out that we started off with 0.1 molarity of the complex ion. So that goes here, 0 0.100. And we didn't start off with any cobalt 2 plus, so that's 0. Since we're starting off with none of my reactant, this change is the, the normal change that we've been seeing. You can only go up from here. So if you start off with a zero on your reactants, that's a plus, right? Plus by something. So your reactant side would be plus and your product side would be minus. But now by how much? I don't know. We'll label it as X, right? Use your mole ratios. There was only one cobalt, so this would be plus one X or just X, but there's six ammonias. So this would have to be plus six X and then one of your complex ion. So this would be minus X. Equilibrium, just combine your initial and your changes. So zero plus X is just X. This would be 0 0.025 plus six X and then this would be 0 0.100 minus X. And these are your values that you're now going to put in in for your KF expression. So I'm just gonna pull this over, over here. We're just gonna use it as like a template because now I'm gonna work with my KF expression. So KF equals concentration of products over reactants. That's always a K value. They're all aqueous, so we're good here. So we have the concentration of CO, NH3, 6 with a 2 plus charge, divided by your two reactants. So I have CO2 plus times NH3. Just make sure that you, you know, if we have to raise anything, but the NH3 is raised to the 6. So that means that the concentration of ammonia has to be raised to the 6, right? There's a 6 coefficient here. Now let's just plug in numbers. KF was what we found in the back of the textbook, 1.3 times 10 to the fifth. This value is 0 0.100 minus X. This is X and this is 0 0.025 plus 6X. Now, whenever you see that you have numbers with either a minus X or a plus X, in this case, it's a plus six X. If you leave those minus X's and plus six X's in there, we're gonna have to do the quadratic equation. And we don't like to do that type of math. So the first thing is we always assume first. So the reasoning behind this is that since our KF is relatively large, it's 10 to the fifth, that means that at equilibrium, we should form mostly our products. But if we started with a lot of products and we're ending with mostly products, that means that this change, this drop is so small that we're barely going to notice it. So if this minus X is really small, that means that this plus six X, even though you're timesing it by six in good faith, we still think that maybe it's going to be a small number and that your equilibrium is probably going to be close to the 0 0.025. So we're going to assume that this minus X doesn't matter and this plus six X doesn't matter. And we're just gonna solve for the X value. We're gonna do the 5% rule just to see if we guessed correctly, and then we'll see what's going on. So let's solve for X. 1.3 times 10 to the fifth equals, looks like I got 0 0.100 equals X, times 0 0.025, and that has to be raised to the sixth. So you can do this math first to just get that one number, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cross multiply. So I'm gonna take the 1.3 times 10 to the fifth and times it by X, and then times it by 0 0.025 to the sixth. 
I believe in your guys' algebra skills. So let's see if we get the same answer. So 0 0.025 raised to the sixth, and then times by 1.3 times 10 to the fifth. I get a really, really, really long decimal, so I'll try to extend it out as much as I can. 3.173828, that should be good enough. 828 times 10 to the negative fifth, times 10 to the negative fifth, and remember, that's multiplied by x. So if we just want to solve for x, we would just divide by that really, really long decimal, right? 3.173828 times 10 to the negative fifth, 3.173828 times 10 to the negative fifth. This cancels out, we're just left with x. And let's see what we get. 0 0.1 divided by 3.173828 times 10 to the negative fifth. And the answer we get is surprisingly a big number, 3,150.8. And that would be molarity. Now, I'm, I'm thinking here that, hmm, I mean, this is a very, very, very large number. So would this surpass the 5% rule? Absolutely not. However, I did take some time to see what this would be if we kept in the minus X and the plus X. And the math for it, since we're you know raising this to the sixth, the math is so outrageous that I would assume that they wanted you to, you know, assume the value. So this would be the answer for this question. However, does it really make sense? No. Um, this just basically means that you're forming all of your cobalt two plus. Now, there probably might have been a mix up with these values. Maybe one should have been a little bit lower than the other one to get kind of like a realistic idea. But as far as our concern for solving the equation, since we said that cobalt two plus was an X value, it would have to be that value. And looks like we needed to keep this to two sig figs. So maybe I will say that this is 3.2 times 10 to the one, two, three molarity. And then that's what it would be here, 3.2 times 10 to the third molarity. And there you go. So I really hope this helped, all right? I hope the setup helped. Um, but I think as far as the actual numbers in the question, they might have been, they should have been maybe a little bit more spread out to give an, an actual, like, example of what that value would be, all right? So there you go, guys. If you would like to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Thank you so much for that, and I will be talking to you in future lessons. Okay, bye-bye.